Hey, this is Paul Martin and Ray the Roadie for the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast. Happy New Year, Ray. Happy New Year, Paul. Um, papa. Um, papa. Um, papa to the New Year. <laughs> okay, what is that supposed to mean? It means we're going to be doing some polka today. Some polka in. Polka in, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you and I should head down over hey, there, over there by that. None uh, of my business what you're doing over we, there. We can we can head o- head on over there down by there uh, to that baby doll polka club there. You know, down by the jewels. I see. So you so you're telling us uh, telling me that we're talking to Eddie Carosa Jr. today, right? Yes, we are. Eddie, Car- a legend in Chicagoland polka. His father, Eddie Carosa Sr. Obviously, yes. Um, was, there go uh, the junior. Right. Was. Um, uh, the owner of the Baby Doll Polka Club and played uh, polka music and wrote the Baby Doll Polka uh, song and uh, and he was a uh, he was a legend and Eddie Carosa Jr. is as well. Yes, he is. He's keeping on the uh, the the music scene and the polka scene. Yes, which we found out will never die. Nope, nope, won't. Will never die. Okay, all right. Well, Mama's look- got as long as Mama's got a squeeze box. Daddy's not going to sleep at night. That's right. Let's right. go see what uh, Eddie has to say about uh, himself, his uh, legendary father, and uh, the world of polka. Let's do it. Welcome to the show, everyone. Today, in our endless search for musicians from Chicago, we've come across Eddie Carosa Jr. Uh, how are you, Eddie? The polka, Feel good. The polka master right here. Uh, appreciate that. Good morning, Paul, good morning, Ray. How you doing, Eddie? Excellent. Excellent. Great. So, um, so Eddie, uh, tell tell us, start us out, um, start us out with the, with with your history and and with I know I know your dad was the the polka king, and yeah, uh, uh, yes, and uh, and he had the Baby Doll Polka Club. So, and 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 tell tell us about tell us about the early days. Just start off there. Well, back in the days, like you mentioned, uh, my mom and dad owned the Baby Doll Polka Club. And that was a bar on the southwest side of Chicago, 7315 Southwestern Avenue. They opened that in 1954 and uh, went from 1954 to 1980. And they would change locations by Midway Airport, 6102 South Central Avenue. And we had that from 1980 to 2004. So my mom and dad had 50 years of polka fun. And back in the early 1930s, my dad was voted uh, America's Prince of Polkas. And uh, he played the button accordion and uh, had the bar and just everybody loved him. And I'm trying to carry it on the old uh, Carosa tradition. That, that's great. That's great. Um, now, now, I understand you played drums and you started mm-hmm. out playing drums, correct? Correct. Yeah. Started playing drums when I was uh, seven years old and played with my dad's band. And that was a lot of fun, you know, playing drums at the Baby Doll Polka Club on a Sunday afternoon and going jobbing around sometimes with my dad and his band, the uh, Merrymakers. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. I I, uh, I see you've played uh, uh, quite, a, quite a few, quite a, you've traveled quite a bit, played on television, played movies, too. Oh, yeah. Through uh, my mom and dad's bar, the Baby Doll Polka Club, they ran annual tours to uh, uh, Europe to Hawaii, Caribbean cruises. So we'd always take like 200 people with us wherever we went and we would play polka music. We'd rent halls wherever we were and just had a gas, you know, always fun. That was back in the what, 70s, 80s and 90s. Now, now as a kid, did you, uh, did you, uh, you played with your dad's band even, uh, what about school and what have you? Oh yeah. Well, uh, weekends were the jobs, you know, uh, I was still went to school. I went to uh, St. Rita School in Chicago, St. Rita High School in Chicago. Marine Valley and uh, where's that at? Payless. Payless Hills. Right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> they had Payless Hills, right. And uh, so that was a weekend kind of thing. And I was, you know, traveling with my dad, mostly local. because We played mostly at his bar on a uh, Sunday afternoon. I would kind of sit in with the boys in the band. So it was a good way to start. Very good. Now I see, I see you, your wife is playing with you now, right? Oh, yeah. Boy, at the last. Oh, you noticed that. Huh? Good. Well, uh, her name was Michaeline. But uh, I call it the girl drummer. 
She's been performing with us for about five years now and uh, never played drums before in her life. She's a retired hospital administrator. And uh, one day I needed a drummer and she was, I'll give it a try. And because she, her and I always used to go dancing and stuff. And she's got great, the great beat. And uh, now she's, uh, I fired the other drummer. Now she's my real drummer. <laughs> <laughs> I, got them I, all mad at me, but the, so the girl drummer is in the band. I was looking at some of your videos and I saw it oh. said, uh, Eddie and the boys from Illinois. Right? Correct. Um, yeah. And it said with wife or and wife. <laughs> and wife. Yeah. Yeah. I had, yeah. Cause a lot of times I'd, we'd be playing and the friends would be dancing and they would say, wait a minute. It says, all it says is boys from Illinois. What about the girl? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so I had to get the little signs made. And uh, matter of fact, just the other couple months ago, I had to buy new band cards. It says boy and girl. Oh, I the boys see. and girl from you know the other ones, you know, you know how women are. Sure. <laughs> now, but, uh, it's a lot of fun. Now tell us about the Baby Doll Poker Club. It closed. Uh, what year was that? Uh, two thousand four. Yeah, we closed in two thousand four, and and that was a bar that uh, every weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, we had a live poker band, and we had a live radio show too, from the fifties to two thousand four. Every Sunday afternoon. On uh, AM radio, 1490 AM, it was called the WOPA out of Oak Park. And my parents had their radio show every Sunday afternoon from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Now, now, did you take the club over or did you run the club uh, for a while? Well, uh, we, I was always there. Uh, my mom and dad always owned it. Uh, my dad passed away in 1998 and my mom is still going strong. And she's 93 years old. Don't tell anybody I told you that. <laughs> so she always ran the place. And we her. all, we, the family always helped out. That's That's great. That's great. And uh, it was a weekly, you know, it, it was open seven nights a week uh, on Western Avenue. And then when we went to Central Avenue and then I started playing with my band there back in 1978, no, 1976, I started okay. my band. I started playing accordion in the uh, early seventies. And uh, so then I started playing accordion and I got my guys together and we played there. I think our first job was on a new year's Eve because the band canceled out and my dad needed a band. So we said, well, you know, son, I hate to have you play, but uh, you know, so we played it and uh, we've been playing accordion ever since with the band. That was our first job it was a new year's Eve at the old baby doll, probably 1976. Yeah. In my neighborhood where I grew up, I remember my my folks would go over there some Sundays and there you just go. hang out. Oh, that that was that right. That was a place to go. Yep. You know, every Sunday afternoon we had a live radio show. It's actually Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. It was a big, Paul's a giant place. What held about maybe four hundred people. Mm -hmm. And this the, the one, one on bar Western? was on Seventy Third and Western. The one on Western. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Did you ever hear of Fat Johnny's Hot Dogs? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Right across the street from there. <laughs> right, right. I know. I know the place. And Fat Johnny's is still there. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Oh, man. No French fries at Fat Johnny's. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we, we were there from, uh, you know, 1954 to 1980. And, and uh, every weekend there was music with the live radio show. And then we moved over to Central Avenue, 61st and Central, right by Middle Airport. And that was pretty cool because uh, we had a big window in front. The planes would be coming in, you know, and it was really a really a nice place. Not as big as the old one, but we still had the live radio show. And uh, we had uh, Wild Chicago came out there a couple of times. Remember Wild Chicago? Yep. We, we were on that show a few times. We had a lot of fun. Uh, Jenny Jones, remember the Jenny Jones show? Sure. They came out and filmed a little segment there. And uh, I on Chicago. So it was, a, it was a popular place when uh, sometimes when the Bears would play on a Monday night. The camera crew would come in and just film the planes taking off for Monday night football and stuff. It was, it was a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of good memories there. I think it was uh, Bobby Skafish and W. Uh, yeah, Loop. And, uh, and the Loop or yes. uh, and uh, XRT. You used to always right. uh, give the weather uh, report from the Baby Doll Polka Club. Yeah, Skafish. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's one of my Facebook friends. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, that, every the weather at uh, O'Hare was what, and but weather at the baby doll, you know, they yes. said stay in midway, so that was kind of cool. And spe speaking of radio, uh, did you did you do something with Jonathan Brandmeier as well? 
Oh yeah, we we were on his show a lot of times in the morning. We uh, whenever he needed a polka band for Kashmir Pulaski Day or uh, some kind of Polish holiday, he'd give us a call. We you know perform our, on the live radio shows with him. That was a lot of fun. Now, now did you? When did you switch from drums to to uh, accordion? Probably the early 1970s. Yeah, you know, and uh, I started playing. I was in. I think I was in grammar school. I took uh, organ lessons. And then that kind of led me to the accordion. And I would still go to my mom and dad's baby doll and just sit along, sit in with the bands, just kind of pick up stuff. And I only took lessons for about six months and all the rest I learned by ear. So wow. it's, uh, and I'm still doing it. You know, I can read music, but uh, most of I can hear a song. I could probably play it for you in a couple minutes. Right. I kind of picked up my guitar with one years and was playing along with one of the songs. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. And if you can play the key of C, G, and F and B flat, you can play along with that. Well, I was going to say a lot of it seemed to be the key of C, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's my that's my vocal range. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, uh, a lot of fun. And then every Saturday uh, back in the day, my mom and dad had a polka show, a, a TV show. Right? I bet your parents would have remembered that. It was every Saturday on Channel 26 which was WCIU and uh, every Saturday live focus show from this, like for 30 years from 70 something to 90 something or yeah, early seventies. And uh, every uh, Saturday was a live focus show. People yeah, that sounds, that sounds familiar. I, I yeah. do believe they watch that also. Cause uh, cause I, I believe Lawrence Welk was also on Saturdays. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. That's right. My dad's show was on at six o'clock and matter of fact, Lawrence Welk was on at seven, seven thirty, if I recall, you know, right. <laughs> Well, speaking uh, of Lawrence Welk, I mean, I know you played, uh, you played, it says you played drums with, with uh, Myron Florin. And, yes. And I remember, I remember as a kid uh, listening to, to, to uh, Lawrence Welk. And there you he, go, said, yeah. he was introduced the great Myron the Florin. <laughs> oh, the way he would say it. Yeah. Oh yeah. We played many festivals with him uh, throughout uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota and uh, the Dakotas and stuff back in the day. What a, what a great accordion player and what a really a, a personal, a wonderful guy also. Now, why, why do you think that polka music is so popular in Wisconsin and the northern Midwest? It's probably the cheese. I don't know, something with the, something <laughs> in the cheese. <laughs> What's the cheese? It, it seems know. like it, has, it, it does have a, a territorial uh, it does. audience. You know? The Midwest, it really does. I don't know. But then uh, now, you know, the West Coast and the East Coast, there's a, there's a lot of polka bands in New York. There's a lot of polka bands in uh, California. So it's uh, it is, like you said, more popular in the Midwest. But uh, all worldwide, there's, you know, the, back in the day, you know, recordings were made in uh, Germany and Aust in Austria and it's Italy. So they've been around forever, you know, and it's uh, it's a good. It's gets a lot of fun music and uh, you play, go to a festival and the kids will enjoy it. You know, there we do a lot of Oktoberfests, and uh, as long as there's beer, there's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, and I think, in fact, I, we met Ray at the at a little Oktoberfest in Brookfield right. in October. You guys came out; that was a lot of fun. Thanks for right. coming out that day. Yeah, I think the like Wisconsin area, Minnesota, this you know Dakotas and stuff. A lot of like Eastern European and Northern European people settled there, and that was their music. That's true. The, I'm half Slovenian and half Polish. And uh, there's, you know, there's the Germans that love the polka. There's the Slovenians, the Serbians, the, you know, everyone. That's so right. Like you say, right in that area, a couple of Minnesota, there was the Iron Range, they called it. Those are all the Slovenian workers there. And they just uh, brought the old time music with them from uh, the old country. Right. 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 I was going to say from the old country, from, like you said, Germany was, was popular. Uh, according to music was popular along with the, Pol uh, Pol uh, the Polish uh, community as well. Right. Oh, sure. You had a German music. That's uh, we met. In fact, back in the day, uh, we when my mom and dad ran tours to uh, Europe, we played in the Lohenbrau tent for about 10 years straight at the Oktoberfest with just thousands of people. That was really a great memory. Wow. That's very cool. And we brought back the chicken dance. Remember the chicken dance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back, it was 1970-something. They were going crazy out there. They were like, what the hell is this dance they're all going like this and you yeah. know doing all this yeah. stuff and we brought it back and it just went crazy they're still going kind of strong with the chickens <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I think so you had a chicken hat on, right? Didn't you? And then Brookfield, I think you had a chicken you hat. You actually got him. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> he, he wasn't wearing his, his, his chicken hat, was he? Oh, boy. Well, I wish yeah. we had a picture of that. <laughs> Paul left again. I think one. we do. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> Speaking of Ray coming out and seeing you in October, uh, how have you survived the COVID, the whole COVID situation? Pretty much. It, it, it was pretty much slowed down a ton. Matter of fact, I just did my end of the year calculations since like the middle of March is when all this started, right around uh, right. St. Patrick's Day, right? Right. And I probably, I had the whole year booked. We always play around 200 times a year at festivals, VFWs, Moose Lodges, anniversary parties, and... Uh, so everything got canceled. Like my whole, you know, my my whole playing out book has all the red X's on it. You know, so I had ninety six red X's. I just counted the other day. Wow! Um, from March to uh, this year, to you know, end of the year. It's gotta hurt. Yeah, it uh, it does. We've been doing it for. Geez, just because you know. of the feeling, right? For feeling from not playing, but I mean, it also hurts the pocketbook. I'm sure. As well. Oh, sure so, does. Yeah, yeah, sure does. You know, I uh, we've been doing it ever since. You know, I was in my 20s, actually 18 years old. And uh, matter of fact, I just got a couple of cancellations for January already. So there's still the cancellations are still coming in. Yeah, I was I was going to ask you next how, how how it looks for for 2021. Right. So far, I've had I, I had like maybe 11 jobs booked for January. And so far, five or six have been read, have been crossed out. You know, we, uh, our music is mostly for the older people. Uh, so we, I do a lot of uh, senior sure. dances and stuff. Sure. So they're still afraid to come out, which is understandable. But uh, I did towards uh, like June and July and August, kind of, we did a lot of outside stuff because the weather was nice. So I had different jobs come in. So we, we did, so we still did a few jobs from March until the end of the year. So it turned out pretty good. Now, who, Not as who, good as before. Who's all in the boys? Uh, who are all the boys and girls in the band? And girl, yeah, right? And girl. <laughs> well, it's uh, my uh, basic band is a four-piece band. I play the accordion. I have a uh, Baldoni accordion, which was made in Italy. And uh, it has the uh, little uh, MIDI thing set up that has the organ and the piano and all that cool stuff in there, electronic bass. And I have a trumpet player that lives in Blue Island. And I have a uh, saxophone player from Crest Hill and the girl drummer that lives with me, my <laughs> wife, of tw- my wife of 20 years. <laughs> so nice. four piece band. And sometimes we go bigger. We'll add in a second accordion player or we'll add a guitar player if they want to do some of the old time rock and roll stuff. You know, so it's uh, the basic band is four is the four of us. And then uh, we do a lot of uh, solo. I do a lot of solo work also. So uh, between that, it's about it used to be like close to two hundred dollar, two hundred uh, jobs a year and stuff. So hopefully, this year we'll uh, pick up a little bit. When we uh, saw you in uh, Brookfield, uh, your wife sat in for a song or two, but you had a different drummer. Yeah, well, uh, that's uh, Joe from uh, Lions, and that, that's uh, he. That, that was his job. He that's his hangout. Uh, Joe's uh, what's it called? Joe's. Uh, Joe Saloon. Yeah, Joe Saloon. Right. And uh, he, that's his hangout. So that whenever we play there, we have Joe play along with us. And he's 83 years old, still playing. That's the it, drums. The 83 years Isn't that old. Crazy? Ah, Isn't that's that great? awesome. He's got the good Fantastic. beat going. And uh, that, that was such a nice day. You know, we, we had the we had all the problems with the virus still in October. And uh, they set us up outside and they put the tents out there. That's so that's what we did mostly for the end of the year was the outside tent stuff. So it turned out pretty nice. That's awesome. Hope I make it to 83 years old. <laughs> oh, there you go. Right. Oh, you will. You will. Do you play anything? Do you play instruments? Yeah, I play guitar. Okay. And Ray, yeah. you're a drummer, right? No, uh, guitar. Guitar. Okay, guitar. Very good. Wonderful. But I love it. The accordion. I never, I've always played the accordion and drums. And uh, I love playing drums, too. So if you, ever, you guys ever need a drummer, give me a call. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> now, now yeah, my sister a- played the accordion. So, okay. so when I was growing up, I played, I dabbled a little bit with her accordion. I never took lessons. I just messed around with it. But Cool. Now, speaking of accordion, I have a question for you. Sure. What's, what's the difference of a, an accordion versus a, a, a button box or a concertina? What, what, are, what are the differences in those? Okay. They are completely different. Yeah. The, uh, the accordion is like, uh, it's just like a piano. So if if you strap the if you strap the piano on your stomach, you could play an accordion. So it'd be just a little heavier. But, but so the accordion, 
You still have to <laughs> squeeze, right? Yeah, right. You still got to go in. You squeeze in and out. Yep. And when you squeeze it, you still get the same sound. But when you play the button accordion or a concertina, it's like a harmonica. When you pull in or pull out, you get two different sounds. When you breathe uh, in and breathe out with a harmonica. So the okay. fingering is totally different. It's not your average A, B, C, D. You know, it's it's uh, C, D. You know, it's all in fifths and stuff. So it's a little more complicated. So and it's, and uh, it's, it's buttons instead of a keyboard, correct? Correct. Yeah. Correct. I've got one around here somewhere. Yeah. Because my dad bought me one back in 1976. And it's uh, a beautiful button box. And it's 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 just like, uh, you know, it's completely different from an accordion. And uh, it's if you play it by ear, you, you could you could if you could play like five or six songs, you could pick up the rest of them because you could kind of feel it like a guitar, you know. Right. You feel where you're going with it. Right. Well, this is see, see, we learned something today, Ray. Yeah, the concert, <laughs> concertinas are. I don't play concertina, but I do play the button accordion. I think they say that a concertina is even different from a button box. All right. So the finger is even different. So you got me on that one. So it's, uh, it's, but it's just like anything else. It's, uh, I love the button accordion. It sounds real European. It's got that nicer, deeper sound to it and stuff. But it, you get a different sound as you, as you open or close it, right? Uh, no, uh, same sound, but it's the same sound, but you're, you got to play different notes. You can't hold, you can't hold down a G and oh, press okay. in because you, you'll, you'll pull out, you get a different sound. Uh, like harmonica, you know, right, right. With accordion, but accordion, you, you can pull it in out as much, as much as you want and stuff, right. you know. Yeah, very interesting. That's very cool. But yeah, it's, it's a beautiful instrument. You know, there they all are. As a matter of fact, I've got my little strolling accordion here. I use this is a the regular accordion, nice little Italian one from nineteen fifties. That's my strolling accordion. And then I have uh, got the button box, which I should show you, but it's in the case over there. That's all right. But, uh, you play a little. Do you have any more? of your uh, dad's accordions? Uh, I, I have his original button box that he, that, that he had back in nineteen forties or no nineteen thirties actually yeah but I, I never want to play it because uh, I don't want it to fall apart <laughs> right. so I just, I'll take it out and give it a little squeeze once in a while you know but uh, my dad back in the day back in nineteen forty eight my dad wrote the baby doll polka right. now Ray you've heard that sure Paul you ever heard this one yes sir yes sir okay, can I play a short version of it for you sure sure go ahead sure. You are my baby doll. Sing along. You are my baby doll. You are my baby doll. You're my sweetheart doll. That's Wrote awesome. That in 1948. Awesome. 1948. Wow. Yeah. And this is the accordion that you play, you know, you get the same note in and out. Right, right. Right. And the button box, if I did that, I would get two different notes. I think I got to charge you for See, that. See, now we learned yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think you guys owe me 25 cents. Okay. okay. <laughs> What's this? Hey, speaking of 25 cents. Send me a bill uh, at the end of the month, will you? Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a bill, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, how about the movie Home Alone? Have you seen that movie? Yeah. Did yeah. you know I was the accordion player in the back of the truck? Right, right. As a matter of fact, we do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one of our one of our claim to fame. You know, that was back in uh, what nineteen ninety. The Kenosha and, Kickers. Correct. Yeah. Right. That was John Candy's uh, band, right? Yes. Oh yeah, that was that was all my band, all my guys. Right. And uh, John, that was our Kenosha Kickers for the movie. Yeah. His his band in in the movie. Right. Right. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So so how was it working with him? How was it working with uh, that? That was great. We filmed, we had, uh, we had, I think, three segments of the movie. We spent 18 hours with John Candy. We were at Meg's Field. Oh, really? We did all, all our stuff at Meg's Field. If you see us uh, in an airport, it's supposed to be in New York, but it's actually Meg's Field. Right, right. Who, 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 who produced that? Uh, who directed that? Uh, John Hughes and Chris Columbus. John Hughes, right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You're the last remaining member of that, uh, the Kenosha Kickers, yes. aren't you? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, there was seven of us. And John Candy passed away and all the other uh, guys in the band passed away. And uh, the last of the last of the kickers. Mm -hmm. Still kicking. <laughs> Still kicking, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing about our uh, our segment, when we're in the back of the truck with John Candy and uh, Kathleen O'Hara, or O'Hara, yeah. we were in yeah. the back of the truck with them and we're playing our music. 
And it looks like we're driving down the road, but we're just, we're standing still. We're sitting in the back of a budget truck in a, at a warehouse at Meg's Field. And the camera crew are in the, are outside the truck pushing it back and forth. So it looks like we're going down the street. Okay, but yeah, they're actually, yeah, they're pushing it, you know, each side, you know, so modern technology, you know? Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of discouraging when you actually see what goes on behind the scenes oh, like that. God, yeah. The it's things great. that are happening aren't really happening. No. John Candy was just a great, we, we had breakfast, lunch, and dinner with him and just cracking jokes. And uh, John Hughes was, uh, he was a lot of fun. He was, uh, Candy's telling us a joke and uh, Chris Columbus is trying to direct everything and uh, trying to make a movie. And John Candy's in the back of the truck with us telling us a joke and he stopped in production because we we're, were listening to his joke. And there, it, was, it was just funny. You know? <laughs> it was fun time. How, did you, how did you get picked to do that or get hooked up with the... With the... Uh, through, through my mom and dad's bar, the Baby Doll Polka Club. They needed a polka band. And when in Chicago, if you need a polka band, you call Carosa. Right. You know, so uh, that's how it all... And we went there and I think we had to play a song for them at New Chair East. That's where their studio was. Right, we went okay. there and up on the north side, Winnetka. Or right, well, that, that's where the movie was basically filmed at. Correct, yeah. Or the studio home was there anyway. Right, that's right. Then they, I think they had their studio in some in that high school that closed down, New Chair East or West or something right. like that. And they called us and uh, they liked it. And we, uh, we laid a soundtrack down. We had to go to a studio to record our music. And then we... Uh, couple of days of that and a couple of days of filming with uh, with John Candy. And uh, we never thought it would be this big, right? You know, oh, yeah. A, yeah, it's it's a great movie and it's it's a classic, actually. 30 years ago. Isn't that crazy? 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're a legend. Oh, there you go. Yeah, in my own mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us about some of the, some of the music that uh, that you've created and that you've written. I know I you've got a, 12 I did write a few songs. songs. Pardon me? You've got 12 albums out? Yeah. Wow. yeah we started with, the, started with the album and the eight tracks. Right. With the eight tracks and the cassettes. And, uh, and then, of course, the CDs. Now we're doing this little, uh, they call it the polka stick. You stick in your UV, USB uh, thing, you know. I call right, it a polka, right. polka stick, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, my first recording was back in the early 70s. And I heard it happened to have right there. It's called uh, Not, Your, Not Your Average Polka Band. Okay. And uh, that was the first one of our first recordings. We did it at a Eddie Bozonchik studio in Chicago. He had a recording studio back in the day. And uh, we just we had some original stuff. I wrote a song, our theme song, The Boys from Illinois. I wrote the words to that. I wrote a nice song for my uh, daughter called the Lauren Marie Polka. I wrote a little waltz for my sisters called the Three Sisters Waltz. I wrote a song for my wife called the Two and More Polka. I debuted that at our wedding 20 years ago. And uh, and so I wrote about maybe seven or eight songs, a couple of nice uh, waltzes on the button box, Trollhof waltz. I was sitting in uh, Munich, Germany, looking outside on the on the deck, playing my button box. And I just started playing and it's a nice little waltz. So uh, maybe about five or six originals. But all that, we play all the standard songs, you know, the Roll Out the Barrel, the Bear Barrel Polka, all the ones you like. I don't want her, you can have her. She's a Packer fan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, it, but it's, it's fun. Yeah, we, uh, and every time we, we, we do the Bears theme song, you know, we do the Bear fight song. But I don't think we have any fight uh, this week. <laughs> Are you still writing any music or? Well, I did write <laughs> in uh, March. But there was no place to play. I had my accordion and there, all my stuff set up downstairs, and I wrote my pajamas polka. No, I'm at home in my pajamas, waiting for the news all clear. Mom and kid are fine, girl drummers online, watching the stocks take a schnitzel. I might shave and shower later, maybe one. And it's it's a cool song because uh, I was I've been in my pajamas for you know for a few months. Right. And it's it's on YouTube. You could uh, go to YouTube. It's uh, my pajamas polka, and it goes. I've been I'm at home in my pajamas, waiting for the the sound all clear. You know, it's it's a cute little song. Yeah. 
and uh, it's on it's on YouTube. I uh, and that got a lot of hits on it too. So that's about the latest thing I wrote. My pajama polka. <laughs> so uh, uh, now now you've you've got some uh, some awards as well, a lifetime achievement award uh, in two thousand twelve, and 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 it's it's time to polka was nominated for song of the year, correct? Yeah. Well, I forgot I wrote that song too. But yeah, a couple of years ago. Yeah, it's one of my original ones. It, that's our latest CD. It's time to polka, and that's the uh, I wrote that song, and uh, the National Polka Association it was nominated for song of the year that year. It's time to polka. It's time to polka. It's time to have some fun tonight. So grab your partner, your polka partner. And dwell around the floor all night Cause we're not here for a long time We're here for a good time So party and polka all night So and then the other awards from the Chicago Music uh, Academy That was a lot of fun We uh, had fun with that And the United Polka Association was a was a big thing I was Accordion Player of the Year there uh, I got a Frankie Yankovic award. Did you ever hear of Frankie Yankovic? Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's he's the polka king. That's Weird Al's dad, right? Who's that? Oh, yeah. That's Weird Al's dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That, yeah. That's what they claim. You know? Right. right. <laughs> and he was a great guy. He's a great legend. Uh, Frankie and my dad were great friends back in the day. You know, my dad was born in 1918. And I think Yankovic was uh, born around the same time, too. And they used to tour together and travel together and Yankovic would play at my dad's bar and stuff. So uh, I loved his music. He was my dad and Yankovic were two of my great influences on uh, my style and the way I like to play. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we even did a Pepsi commercial. Did you hear about that? Oh, yeah. I, yeah I, I that was a lot of fun. That. I did see that and I, yeah. I, I looked it up. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of fun. It was back in uh, 2000 or 2001, I think. We, they flew us to New York and we did the commercial and it was all about uh I think if you buy a, pe- a six pack or a 12 pack or a case of Pepsi, you get these little coupons. You can create your own CD. So it ran all year. And we got a lot, a lot of play on that. It was kind of cool. So That's something it. always comes up. You never know. The polka thing is, it'll never die. You know, it's uh, people say it'll, it's not that popular, but I disagree. I've been doing it for over 50 years and I've been playing a lot every year. And it's a lot, it's fun music. Yes, it is. Yes, it, it is. is. It's and, a lot and, of fun. And I, I agree with you. I don't think it'll ever die. No, it's a lot of fun. Hey, you know, back in the 80s, I had a rock and roll drummer play with me. You did? You never guessed who it was. Who was that? Smashing Pumpkins, Jimmy Chamberlain. Oh, Jimmy Chamberlain. Yeah. Uh, he played drums with me for four years back in the early 80s. No wow. kidding. Isn't that crazy? That's wild. He, he's, he's from Joliet. A lot of my friends and band members were from are from Joliet. And a uh, friend of a friend hooked us up. And he he just what a great drummer at the time, you know. And uh, who would have thought that uh, he just keep going and going? On forty five, on a, we did the chicken dance on a forty five. Oh, yeah. Pardon me. Let's see, he's still there. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, we lost. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. The bird oh. at the chicken dance on a forty five. Wow. Do you have any of these? Jay Chamberlain, hard to tell, but Jimmy Chamberlain right there. <laughs> Very cool. So that's one of our uh, things too. He was such a such a great kid. Well, kid, yeah. <laughs> We'd be playing a polka job, and he, he brings all these drums, all these drums with him. I go, Jimmy, you know, he's got three or four cymbals. He's got a uh, roto toms, to- all this stuff. I go, what are you doing with all this stuff? You you know, <laughs> you don't need all this. I didn't want. I don't want to say shit, but you don't need all this yeah. stuff. You know. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it, was, it was a great experience for us. And uh, he still mentions it once in a while, too. You know, I retired from a real job a few years ago and I was still playing and working. That was kind of fun. And I uh, just love to play. We, our polka music is, I've been doing it ever since I was seven years old and uh, just love it. And we meet so many people. And lately, well, before the pandemic, we were doing a lot of weddings, but we were like the token polka band. <laughs> you know, because the uh, aunts and uncles and the grandparents want to hear some old time music. Sure, sure. And so, the bands that they have, or or, or the, even the DJs don't play it right. Right there, you go. Right. So they would they would have the DJ play, and then about between ten eleven o'clock at night, we'd bring our accordions in and drums, and people would have a few drinks. They play poker. We play poker for about a half hour. You know, and that's what we've been doing. So if you ever need a polka band, 
Count us in. <laughs> All right. Now, now you said, now I noticed it says you played some rock and roll. What kind of, uh, and you said uh, sometimes you have a guitar player. Or yeah. Something. We do the old stuff. Johnny be good. You know, yeah. that kind of the twist, that kind of stuff, you know, and, uh, on the accordion, you know, on accordion. Yeah. Right. <laughs> do my, play my three chords, you know, C, yeah. F and G <laughs> three chord progression. Right. <laughs> Right. And that, that's a lot of fun. We do old time country music. We do the the achy breaky heart. They like to do the line dances still, you know. Sure, sure. And uh, but mostly besides our polkas, we play the old time music, the Frank Trinacha, the uh, Dean Martin music, you know, stuff like that. So people like to hear the ballroom stuff, you know. So we uh, not just play polkas. We do a variety of stuff also. So uh, so how do we find you uh, uh, social media wise or? Or uh, uh, on the web or, or whatever. Yeah, well, that's great. Uh, we uh, we are on Facebook, of course. Just uh, you could uh, Eddie Carosa, Google me, and I'll, or not Google me, but I'll friend you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the main thing is our uh, website. We have a website, uh, Eddie Carosa Junior dot com. Okay. And that's out there. Or just Google Eddie Carosa, and a lot of stuff comes up. And uh, we'd love to come out and play, you know, so if you or anyone out there in your listening audience, we're uh, we're a polka band that we play old time music, too. And Oktoberfest is great. We'd we strap on the Lederhosen. So nice. we, we play all the good Lederhosen, the good Oktoberfest music. And uh, so I see uh, you're wearing them now, right? Well, you know, I got the, I got my sweatshirt on. Yeah, I got the leader hose around somewhere. Yeah. I'm still I still got my pajamas on. We talking <laughs> Everyone says March. No, yeah. <laughs> I've got awesome. my German hat and everything, and a chicken dance. So we're always ready for that. And yeah. but, uh, we're always ready to roll. You know, we love to play, and uh, this is this is uh, really fun to do this with you guys. And I was watching or listening to some of your podcasts, and I didn't uh, hear about too many polka bands on your uh, podcast. So this <laughs> this might be a first for all of us, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It definitely is. But uh, but we. We love to, like I said earlier, uh, we were talking before the show that that uh, we we love getting the inside uh, scoop on on what's happening with some of the bands and some of the musicians and some some of the backstory. And uh, obviously, your backstory is great with your dad and and the Baby Doll Polka Club and everything else. It's very cool. Well, I appreciate that. We uh, we love it, and uh, all the bands out there. You know, hopefully next year things will be great. You know, and I, I know a lot of the, a lot of the guys you've interviewed are all they played all the festivals, so. Hopefully some of these festivals will come back, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Hopefully uh, that's all we can do is keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah, we, we enjoyed those church festivals and some of the summer fest. I think the last time we played one, we opened up for, uh, remember deep purple. Oh yeah. We, yeah. They used to, they used to do the tours of all the festivals and stuff. And, uh, Joel Daly and the sundowners, a real good country band. That oh, was sure. a lot of fun. Well, I took March. Those were, those guys are great. Oh yeah, yeah. We uh, we know uh, we'd be the uh, first band to start off the festival with the polkas, you know. And all of a sudden, all these motorcycle guys come in. Here comes the eyes of March, all on motorcycles. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, a lot of good memories. Yeah, good we've memories. interviewed uh, Jim Peterick and a couple of the oh, guys man. from the Eyes of March, and uh, yeah, they're they're great, great entertainers and great musicians as well. Oh, definitely. I love all your. I, I checked a lot of your podcasts out and listened to them. So uh, it's a great thing to listen to, you know. And it's nice you have them archived like that. It's wonderful. Well, thank you, thank you. We're hoping you share this one uh, when it comes out, and uh, and we'll keep you posted on it. But in the meantime, thanks for joining us today. Well, Paul, it's thanks a lot, Eddie. Well, pleasure meeting you and Ray. Thank you very much. Thanks to you that I'm here. So I appreciate it, and I hope to see both of you guys sometime this summer. All righty, I'm sure you will. All right. Thanks. Polka on. <laughs> thanks guys thanks thank you okay that was eddie carosa jr the uh i guess he well he, he said his dad was the prince one time called the prince of polka but i guess if his dad was the king of polka he'd be the prince of polka right he I would be know. he would be or a duke but kind of differs for the rock and roll chicago podcast um a little bit my my i'm still dancing around a little bit here but a music, a musician nonetheless, and uh, and and he's been around Chicago forever, so uh, we felt we had to talk to Eddie, and we yeah. did, and that's what Eddie's we got. Great guy, great guy. I mean, I would, I don't, when he's out and about again, you got to go see him. I mean, I've I've seen him at some outdoor festivals. It's just a lot of fun, a lot of good time. Yes, yes. And anybody can polka. I really don't think there's any. I, I think you just bounce around. I don't think there's any oh, any beg, kind of steps. I, I beg to differ with you there. I think some shoe polka dancers would argue that fact. 
Well, I'm not a true polka dancer, so that's why I say what I do. But then I, I usually say a lot of <laughs> things that I well, probably shouldn't say. Well, you wear chicken hat. So. I do wear a chicken hat from time to time, yes. Yeah, so that gives us, gives me an answer right there, I think. Yeah, you you are correct. You know, and then I, I, I do the chicken dance at time to time. I, I've done that. And, and uh, you know, the greatest thing about that, some of this that music. That's a lot you know, for your character, you know, you know. Well, you know, I, I had a, I had, I had a, a drinking problem for a while, and then one day I did the hokey pokey, and then I turned myself around. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. Well, okay. thanks for joining us this week. Uh, make sure you uh, look up the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66. Uh, that's where our usual studios are, except now uh, we're Zooming everything. But uh, soon we'll get back to the studio. Make sure you check out the museum. Uh, donate. Uh, they're doing a lot of great work over there. They're looking for some uh, money to help out with new doors and flooring and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it's coming along really well. And you know, a lot of you people out there have already donated, and we thank you for that. You can become a member for Mere, mere pittance, smitten pittance. I believe it's twenty-five dollars to be a charter yeah. member. So, uh, all right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next next time, right here see on the you next week on the Rock and Roll Chicago Podcast. Bye bye. This is Paul Martin and Ray the Roadie, and we're here to talk to you about GHS strings. That's right, Ray. Whether you play electric guitar, acoustic, or bass, or even banjo, mandolin, or ukulele, then GHS has the strings for you. GHS strings are easy to play with a rich, full balanced tone available in many different gauges. Great for all musical styles. So if you play, play with the best. Play GHS. HS strings. Rock and roll, she goes.